we were uh, calculating uh, hydrostatic force, right? Alexa and Whitney, do you guys have a question? No? Oh, okay. Um, so, um, so we were calculating the hydrostatic force on a side of um, an object, right? One side of an object. And um, so you had, you know, some water and you have some object inside and you want to calculate the force on one side of the uh, of the plate, right? You guys remember? Do you, and what was our strategy? Strategy was to yes, you grab a slice, right? So you find the force on one slice, and we use rectangular slices with thickness delta y, right? So you find the force on um, the slice, and how do you find the force again? Do you guys remember? You multiply three things. Density. density. So fluid density. Area. Times the area of the slice times the depth. OK, so that was the, the general uh, formula, right? So that was our basic idea. And so then that was the force on one slice. And then to find the um, actual force, the uh, exact value, u, how many slices? Infinitely. infinitely many slices, right? So the force is equal to the infinite sum of all the forces. And you convert this into the integral of all that stuff, right? So that was the, the basic idea, right? OK, all right, so let's do another example. So let's say you, um, let's see. So let's do, so last time, remember, we did, um, so we did a couple examples. We did a, uh, uh, just a block, right, a rectangular block. And then we did a, um, a function, a parabola shaped, uh, Parabola-shaped uh, plate, right? Dunked in water. OK, so let's say you want to um, calculate calculate the force, hydrostatic force, on uh, one side of a perfectly shaped tortilla chip dipped in, I was going to say salsa, but you can, do you guys want to do guacamole instead? Guacamole. Okay, so we are going to grab a tortilla chip and we're going to dunk it in and let's see. All right, so uh, how do you normally dunk in tortilla chips? Tip, tip, tip up, right? Usually, don't you? I don't know. I mean, it doesn't really matter, right? We're doing triangle. So perfectly shaped. Let's, we're gonna do. Let's tortilla chip. Hmm. Let's put here in parentheses uh, triangular. And let's say that um, let's say these are perfectly shaped equilateral, equilateral triangle. And let's say that it's uh, I don't know two, two centimeters. Side length. Does that sound like? What is it? Yeah, it is a small chip. Okay, three. Fine, three. Three centimeters. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have the perfect specs. Of the of the perfect tortilla chip. Besides, we are making uh, this up. So, okay. So let's say that we. Um, all right. So um, we'll do this in two parts. So let's say we're gonna do first. We want to calculate it if we dip it, um, dipped. So the top is one centimeter from um, from water level. 
And then uh, we'll do a second part where it's only dipped, dipped so one centimeter is underwater. So I guess, yeah, okay, that makes sense, right? So it's two different situations. One is we dip it all the way in and our fingers get dirty, right? Dip it in so the top is one centimeter from the water level and then, yeah. So and then you can, you can lick your fingers after because you have yummy guacamole on your fingers. Um, okay, so anyways. When you, um, the second case is yes. You know, what's funny is we, so I did this example in my other class, but I didn't do the salsa. The salsa was actually one of, it's one of the students' idea. I just did a triangle and then said, oh, like salsa. It's like, oh, I should try that in my next class. So that's why we're doing the salsa, or guacamole, FYI. But anyways, go ahead with your question. Um, when you dip it in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you eat it, it tastes delicious, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for one side of it. Right. So only one side. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. All right. So let's do part A. So we've got, um, hmm, we decided guacamole, right? So we've got guacamole. Uh, what did we decide? Tip in? Tip up? Tip down. Tip, tip down? Okay. Tip down. So it says that the top is one centimeters from the water, from water level. So it looks like this, right? And so this is uh, one centimeter. So the top is one centimeter from water level. You guys agree? And then the, the length of the sides are two, right? Oh, right, three, because two wasn't big enough of a chip. So we had to do three, sorry, you're right. <laughs> All right. So, um, all right. Actually, um, let's do let's do four because it'll help with the. Uh, I mean, three is fine, but I think we'll we'll get fractions more fractions than we probably want. So let's change it to four. Okay. All right, so see, bigger chip. It could be a what? Bite size, size well, whatever. Anyways, um, okay, so we're calculating the force. So we have we draw drew a picture, right? And then we want to do. So let's do. Um, let's just draw one slice right here. So this is my slice. The thickness is delta y. And then uh, what's one of the most important things that you need to decide? Yeah, where to put the axis, right? So where do you guys want to put it in this case? Guacamole level, sure. That sounds like a good idea. So guac, uh, y axis at guac level. So uh, this means that, So right here, the distance from the y-axis to the slice is what? Is equal to y, right? So that's equal to um, y, because this is where I put my y-axis, right? You guys agree? OK. All right. So now, um, so to find the force, the force is equal to um, the uh, fluid density, right? Which is omega, uh, do you guys know the density of guacamole? No. no, okay, so we don't know. So we'll just leave it as omega. But what are the units? <laughs> Even though we don't know what it is. Since we're in, so uh, we're in the metric system, right? So we'll, what, what are the units of density? Mm. Well, let's do it in, let's keep it standard. So let's do kilograms per meter cubed. Okay, and then, um, hmm, okay. Uh, what about the, the, so that's the density, right? Times the depth, which is, what's the depth of the slice? Y, y meters, right? 
times the area of the slice. The area of the slice is equal to the length times the width. We already know the width, right? The width is delta y. What's the length? We need to do some work, right? So over here, let's, let's do a little separation here. And let's do a little work. because So that's this right here, right? So this is the length. Let's call it L. So to find the length, of the slice. This is usually where you have to do a little bit of work to figure out what that is. Um, so any ideas on how we can find? So remember, notice how as the slice, as you go down, you're calculating the force, right? And you're going down. So your um, the length of the slice is changing, right? Based on what y is equal to, the length is going to be different, right? You guys agree with that statement? Okay. So. Um, Sorry. This means that, so I need to find a formula for the length based on what um, y is. So any ideas on how I could do that? Yeah? Um, would that make, well, I think it would, the uh, biggest length would be 4, so it would be like 4 minus delta y or something like that. Does have something to do with delta y fraction? Um, not... Okay. Mm, not really. It has more to do with, with the y value itself. The y value. Yeah? Where it counts the triangle? Does it make it smaller? The triangles? Yes. So that means you can use. Think calculus one. You did a lot of things like this when you did. Related rates and optimizations you used when you had triangles and cones you used. <coughs> what kind of triangles? Right triangles. Similar. similar triangles, yeah, right? Don't you, aren't they similar? Yeah. yeah, they're similar, right? So you have the, the you have this tri the big triangle, right? And then you form a, another little so like okay, all right. So you have this is my big triangle, right? And then right here, you form another smaller triangle that is similar, right? Yeah, OK. So I'm trying to find L. And I know that this is 2, 2, and 2. So what do you need to set up a, a proportion here? You need two more sides of the big and small, right? Mm -hmm. So like you have the base of the big and the base of the small. So you need two more sides, so which would be a good one to find. Why, why is it two now and it was four before? Oh, sorry. It is four. <laughs> sorry. I was, I was back at, sorry. Yes. Thank you for pointing that out. No, it was always four. Well, it was two when we started the problem, but it's four. I forgot that we had changed it. But um, so what's my, my, what proportion can I set up? L L over 4 is equal to, what do I need? I need something. What is it? You gotta find the height. height. Yes. I need the height, right? I need to know what the height of the triangle is because you're going to need it anyways to do the limits of integration, right? When you do the limits of integration, we need to know from where to where we need to go. So we need to know what the height of the triangle is, right? Don't you agree? Yeah, OK. All right, so let's, let me uh, move this over a little bit. So the height of the triangle, so let's do another little doodad here. So that one's not too bad. We can find that, no problem. Um, this is 4. This side is equal to 2, right? So I just chop it in half. So what's the other side equal to? Square root of 4 squared minus 2 squared, so square root of 12, yes. So the height is 12, right? So this right here, the height is, sorry, square root of 12. So that means that L over 4 is equal to, so this is the small base, small base over big base is equal to small height over big height. What's the small height? If you go back here, what's the height from here to here? What is that? Four 
minus Square root of 12 minus? Close. No. So you're just looking at right here, this point right here. Square root of 12 minus? Y minus, okay, okay, I guess, so it's, okay, so this height right here is equal to the entire thing, right, this whole thing, right, which is what? No, that's, isn't that Y? Oh, wait, no, that's not Y, sorry, that's, yes, what did you say, square root of 12 plus? Square root of 12 plus 1, right? You guys agree? Because the height of the triangle is root 12 mm -hmm. and the depth is 1. So then if you measure from the, the very top to the very bottom, this is uh, square root of 12 plus 1, right? That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then, but you're looking for this, so then you have to take away the distance from here to the top of the guacamole, which is? which is, it's y, right? So this is square root of 12 plus 1 minus y, right? That's the, that's the height of the small triangle, this one right here. Do you guys agree? So you take the whole thing, and then you take away this, the distance from the slice to the water level, to the axis. And then that would be divided by what? Root 12 which is the height of the big triangle, right? Does that make sense? You guys with me still? There's some roots in there, but that's okay. Okay, so then this gives us a way to find the formula for the length, right? So the length then is equal to, so the length is equal to um, four over root 12 times root 12 plus one minus y. Okay, um, so that's the length, right? So then it's 4 over root 12 times uh, root 12 plus 1 minus y hmm, times um, arg. Hold on. Can I erase that? Do you guys mind if I erase this right here? Yeah? Okay, it's done. Did it. Because I need the space. Sorry. I need the space. Oh, Carmine's crickets. Okay, so um, that's the length. What are the units of length? What are they? Meters. Uh, that's what I want them to be, but in this case, actually, they are centimeters. Why, how do I know they're centimeters? Yeah, because the length, the chips are measured in centimeters, right? It's four centimeters, so the length that I found is in centimeters. Okay, so then the, um, so right here, then centimeters, right, times, so that's the length, times um, delta y, um, Delta Y, also centimeters, right? Because that's part of the area. Okay, so I've got a, bigger, a little bit of a problem, right? Because I've got centimeters and meters. So how do I get rid of the centimeters, turn them into meters? Convert. Convert. I can do this. This is no problem. All right, what do I multiply by to convert from centimeters to meters? So how many um, centimeters in a meter? 100 centimeters in a meter, right? But I need how many I need centimeters squared, right? So it has to be 100 squared centimeters squared is 1 meter squared. You guys agree? You guys remember this, right? Okay. Good times. So now, one more thing. So this gets rid of the centimeters, centimeters, centimeters. What happens with all the meters? Uh, 
I have meter cubed on the denominator. Well, how many meters do I have in the numerator? I have also meters cubed on the numerator, right? Mm -hmm. Because I have, I have meters and then meters squared, so that gets rid of the meters cubed. So what are the units that I'm left with? Kilograms. <coughs> Kilograms, right? But isn't in the there you go. That's the spirit. What's missing? Why is it? So I, I apply my formula, right? But what's missing? Yeah, gravity, right? Why is it that I have to do this in the metric system and I don't have to do it in the British system? So I have to multiply by 9.8 meters per second squared. So remember in that when we did um, last time, we didn't have to do this, right? That was because we were in the British system and we ended up with pounds, which is actually a unit of force, but kilograms is a unit of mass, so then we have to multiply by gravity to, inver to convert it into force. Whew, okay. All right. So um, if we simplify this a little bit, hmm, let's clean this up. So the force on the slice, is let's do um, so let's put um, the so I have 4 over uh, root 12 and then I'll put the uh, root 12 plus 1 minus y and then let's put the so the omega we'll put it right there and then over the 100 squared is in the denominator right so we'll put that in the denominator what's 100 squared how many? 10,000. Okay. Uh, what else? What am I missing that I haven't put up there yet? Out of all the stuff that's there. Got 4, omega, root 12 plus 1 minus y. Delta y. I'm missing delta y. And I'm missing one more thing. I'm missing the gravity. Hmm. Let's put that over here. 9.8 times. One more thing I'm missing. Well, the, the unit. So in the end, kilograms per times meters per second squared, that's a newton, right? Uh, but there's one more thing that's missing that I haven't put on there. Y. Yeah, the y, right? This y right here. Does that make sense? So we have a lot of kind of stuff cluttering around, but it's really not, it's the same thing, right? We just have some roots in there and stuff. And this happens very often when you're dealing with, um, with triangles. So you have you know, Pythagorean theorem and all kinds of stuff. And then we add guacamole to the mix. All kinds of weird things happen. But um, any hoot. Uh, so now what do I do? So that's the force on one slice. Then I write it as a sum. sum. So the force is equal to the infinite sum, right? Sum from 1 to infinity of uh, 9.8. Hmm. Let's see. Can we reduce this a little bit in our heads? Uh, this is 10,004. That can be reduced to 1 over 2,500. No? You guys want to do that? So this isn't this 9.8 omega over 2,500. Yeah, Thomas? Oh, that's newtons. We can put newtons. That's the same as kilograms times meter over sec uh, second squared. Or mass times gravity. It's force. Newtons. And then, so square root of 12 plus 1 minus y times one more y delta y. Thumbs up so far? You guys with me still? Are you missing a root 12? Am I missing a root 12? Yes. Thank you. Missing a root 12 in the denominator. Anything else that I'm missing? Um, okay. So then this I can write it as the integral of all of this stuff, right? 9.8 omega over 2500 root 12 root 12 plus 1 minus y y dy. So everything else is the same, right? And then, oh, actually, we forgot. Well, I forgot 
to put the little eyes here. Um, but what is my what are my limits of integration? What do my limits of integration represent? Yeah, the limits of integration represent the y values that I go through when I'm calculating my force, right? So if I go back to my guacamole picture, what do my um, where do I what y value do I start calculating the force at? One, right? Because this is one. So from one all the way down to square root of 12 plus one. That's it. Thumbs up. That's it. Is that as far as we're going to go? That's it. Uh, well, you can find that, but that, at that point, I mean, this is what you want to be able to do. Evaluating this, you know, you can do it because it's a simple integral, but it's. Not the. All right, and we leave the gravity in G. The gravity. Well, I don't know. I mean, you should kind of know what it is. It's, but, but that's yeah. It's not. Um. Questions. Yeah, Andrew. Would it be good to change root 12 to 2 root 3, or would that just mess um, up? It probably would be a good idea, yeah. I mean, I don't see why not. Um, you would, I mean, you can also simplify this a little bit more, but. Um, now, for the triangles, actually, um, it probably would have been easier to do something different. What would have been good to do? So keeping everything, everything, I mean, the, the same circumstances, but what would have been maybe a a better way to, to go with my approach here. Maybe would have simplified some of the numbers a little bit. No. No. Um, where else could you have put the, the axis? Can you think of somewhere else you could have put the axis to make it a little bit easier? On the top? top of yeah, if you put it, in this case, if you put the axis on top of the, um, on top of the triangle, what that does is when you set up your proportion, it's not as messy, right? Because notice that your, um, oh, actually, I erased it already. But you would have, if you look at this again, and you imagine this is, um, root 12, right? So when you do your proportion, it would look like L over 4 equals to the height of this is just, um, if y is the distance from here to here, then that would just be root 12 minus y, right? And then over, what would that be? Oh, root 12, yeah. So it's a little bit nicer, right? Instead of having a plus one kind of hanging around everywhere. And then you just have to adjust other things, right? What else would change? If I, if I change the axis to be at the top of the triangle instead of up here, what else would have to change? Would the depth change? Would that expression for the depth have to change? It would have to change, right? Mm -hmm. Because, so take a look. So this is what it, it looks like. Let me uh, get rid of some of this stuff that's kind of getting in the way. So I have, this is y now, right? If, I'm, if my axis is right here, so that's y. So what's the depth now? The depth is y plus 1, right? So this would change to y plus 1. Does that make sense? Why it would be y plus 1? Because you have to add that amount, right? Um, and then, so this would change, right? This would, that wouldn't be there. Um, and then what else would change besides from all that stuff? Yeah, the limits of integration, right? In that case, you would want to do, so if you change that, so this is what it would look like, right? So you have, 
12 um, root 12 minus y, right, without the plus 1 in there anymore, right? That's how the length would change. Um, and then instead of having the depth be y, we said it would be y plus 1, and then dy. But then what would the limits of integration be now? Instead of going from 1 to 1 plus root 12, which is what it was, right? Now it would go from 0 to y equals 0 to square root of 12. Does that make sense? But see, if you take a look at it, it's exactly the same, right? Because take a look at this integral right here. This integral, if you look at what's inside of these parentheses, notice that when um, y is 0, this one, the first one is root 12. And then at the end, it's when y is root 12, this is 0. So it goes from root 12 to 0, which is exactly the same as the other one, right? It went from root 12 to 0. And then this one goes from 1 to 1 plus root 12, which is exactly the same as the other one went. So it's really the same integral. It just looks different. When you switch the function, and you shift the function inside, and you shift the limits of integration, but it's exactly the same. Yeah? OK. So it's good to be flexible with the, uh, the axis, because you can make it easier sometimes by being able to move it around. And also, when you have the function, you uh, so here we're lucky because we can move the axis wherever we want. But if you have a function, you have a plate defined by the area under a function, then you have to leave it where it is, right? So you have to be able to find it, like the one we did last time with the parabola. Yes. Okay. Questions? No. All right. So um, we won't do the, the entire thing, but let's just take a look. What would change if we dip it so that only one centimeter is underwater? So that's part B. So we won't do kind of the whole thing from the beginning, but let's just kind of take a look at what, what happens. So um, we put it so that it's one centimeter underwater. So that means, or under, under guac, right? So this is one centimeter. Um, so that's what it would look like. Where do you guys want to put the axis? Top of water. Top of, top of guac. Like right there. Y po positive y value facing down. Um, OK, so then if we take a slice right here, so it has delta y, right? Um, so this has a particular uh, length. Um, the, so the, the size of it is the same, right? It's still 4. The height is still square root of 12. Um, so. I still need to, um, does, is the length, the formula for the length going to change? No. Yes, it is. So, is that a no? <laughs> it's upside down. I'm just checking to make sure you guys are still seeing straight. Um, so <laughs> 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 oh, man. Anyways, all right, so this is what it looks like, right? We have similar triangles. This is L. Um, this is 4. Um, <coughs> the height is root 12, but then what's the, what's the height of the small one? What's that right there? One. That one's easy, right? This time it's just equal to, oh, well, actually, it's, it's this, right? I think it's easier to. 1 minus y, right? So this is just 1 minus y, right? Does that make sense? So the distance from, so the, from the guacamole to the tip is 1, and then you take away uh, y, which is the distance from the axis to the slice. And that's the, the height of the little tip part, right? The little triangle inside. So here we get 
So if I set up my, uh, my proportion, then it would look like L over four is equal to, what goes on top? Small over big is one minus y over root 12, right? So that means that the length is equal to four over root 12 times one minus y. Um, okay, so then if I take a look at the force, so this is equal to, so the same stuff, right? So we have, um, the gra let's put just gravity in the beginning, uh, density, um, we'll put our, um, our 10,000 to convert from centimeters to meters squared, right? Centimeters squared to meters squared. So that's the same as, as what I had before. And then I have to multiply by the uh, depth, which is, what's the depth? Y, right? And then times the area, which is the length, right? 4 over root 12 times 1 minus Y and then delta Y. So this right here, this is the um, depth. That's the depth. This is the area of the slice. Um, this is the density. This 9.8, that's gravity. We need it because we're in the metric system, right? And then this is uh, to just do the conversion, right? In this case, we because we wanted to go from centimeter squared to meter squared. That's the same as the other one that we just did. So we just threw them in there. What are the units of that? What is it? Newtons, Newtons yeah. Newtons. Um, now, what are the... So we put all this in the integral, right? So the same thing, 9.8 omega. Oh, I forgot my eyes here again. 9.8 omega over 10,000 uh, y times 4 over root 12, 1 minus y dy. But then where do my limits of integration go from and to this time? 0 and 1 plus 1 minus 1. 0 to 1? Yep. 0 to 1, right? Because it starts at y equals to 0, which is right here. And then it goes all the way to the tip, which is y equals to So in this case, would it have helped to put the axis at the top of the triangle? Probably not, right? This is actually better. Um, so that's pretty much it. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah. Uh, you know that the problem you had with our last Friday is that it's not like that. It was like the... Oh, um, these? Yeah, I meant to put them on the homework assignment that I gave you, but I forgot to put them on. So just do them if it helps. I mean, you should do them, but you don't have to turn them in. But if you didn't get 